been a while since my last review and uh, it's getting to that time of year now where the nights are drawing in a little uh, as you can probably tell got the light on uh, so time for another review the first for a couple of weeks and uh, this game is a flight simulator which also happens to have the same name as one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs it's called Prowler here's the front cover of Prowler then and quite a nice logo at the top there with a kind of uh, badge of honor with a tiger on it there with Prowler written on the front of it and otherwise it's just the face of a pilot uh, surrounded by a rather scary glow and in his visor he seems to be fighting off aliens or something can't quite make it out really and it says Prowler on the spine and on the back we've got some screenshots wherein you can see that it is some kind of a flight simulator all pretty similar screenshots and the blurb says War in 2150, pilot the most advanced fighter aircraft in service, blah 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 blah, prowler the Northall Q-15C assault craft, etc. And at the bottom there it says, a great air combat simulation programmed by Mike Denman. And inside the inlay we've got some micro font instructions, zoom very closely in there, basically um, you've been at war, you're fighting some evil aliens, can't be overstated, mean, vicious, blah, 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 blah. Basically, you've got to fight stuff and shoot stuff, and you're flying a plane or a helicopter or some kind of craft to do that. There you go, a Q-15C assault helicopter, it says there. Uh, so it's got lots of instructions. It's got various weapons you can choose from by pressing keys on the keyboard. It's got all this stuff about instrumentation, which is better illustrated inside with this cockpit diagram and uh, the instructions go through all the various things on the cockpit controls radar etc 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 bit of help at the bottom there and loading instructions and that's pretty much it for the inlay it's quite nicely put together but way 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 too much information for my liking uh, it just makes me not want to play the game really so the game loads and there's not really a title screen as such, it just goes straight to this options screen uh, which as you can see has got various skill levels and scenarios to play. Um, so if you push left and right you choose the skill level, so we'll go with the uh, co-pilot and then up and down chooses the scenario as you can probably see there. Um, so what I've found through playing before is that the, well as it says there, the first six are training missions and then there's also some missions against the enemies so we'll go with that first contact mission and there is a reason for that so let's get the game started as you can see you're presented with a cockpit view um, pretty detailed lots of readouts um, which I'll try and go through in some way or another but there's so many of them that I'm never going to remember uh, but there is, this is your weapons at the top there and how many of each weapon you've got left, if I remember correctly. That's your shields, not sure what that one is. Um, these are sort of X, Y coordinates, can't remember those. One of these is altitude and one of these, I think that's altitude. Uh, one of these is speed. Uh, I can't remember what these ones on the right are. And there's also a clock there which tells you, oh it's actually going up. I thought that's how much time you've got left for the mission but it's actually just going up so I don't really know what that does. Um, there's loads and loads of controls, loads of keyboard controls, again most of which I'm probably not going to remember um, but it's not a great game to be perfectly honest, we'll get that out of the way right from the start. Uh, so let's get on with it. The number keys um, give you a sort of ground speed, so if I press 3 for example you can hear the engine firing up and this dial here is going, you can see things moving towards me. I'm not even off the ground yet, I don't think. You can see things appearing and targeting and sh me shoot, uh, sorry, them shooting me. Um, F5 starts moving these two dials around. Um, this is your sort of um, vertical thrust. So once you're up and in the air and moving, you can control with the joystick. Left and right turns your left and right. Forward makes you go, points the nose of the plane down and backwards pushes you up. You don't get very high in the air, it's fair to say. As you can tell, noises are pretty much limited to just these sort of aircraft noises and some explosion noises. 
and through playing it before all I seem to do is just spin around in circles and try and shoot stuff so to shoot you press fire button and you can see there's a missile shooting there you can alternate between different weapons as I mentioned in the instructions so X chooses a different weapon but as you can see fired a little red thing and then it just reverts back to your standard weapon uh, there's also options to expand and contract this radar by pressing F1 and F2 so you can see the dots on the radar changing as I move that around again I don't really know what the point is of that um, other things you can do is press H for help which takes that annoying noise away for a moment at least uh, which gives you an indication of the sort of things you've got on the screen to be dealing with tanks, aircraft, motherships, clouds, rocks you can even get points for shooting rocks apparently um, so let's get back out of that and you can also press C which I can't remember what C does, some kind of computer I think um, there's, a, there's an enemy so let's try and shoot that enemy there I'm shooting at it, you can see I've locked it on target there and I've killed it there's one enemy down um, and that's pretty much it for the game to be perfectly honest there's not a lot going on, you just seem to fly around shooting this stuff uh, and it's nicely put together in terms of graphics, the movement's pretty good the, the horizon never changes, the scenery underneath is not very impressive as I say you can shoot rocks um, the, there seems to be some way of getting a score but I can't see a score on the screen just drop the speed down a bit lower because I'll reduce the engine noise a bit so yeah that basically you just fly around trying to find things to shoot um, things shoot you back but it doesn't really seem to kill you very much it just sort of diminishes your shield for a second or two and then you're fine again so it's a bit strange you're not quite sure you die I played it for about 15 minutes in a previous game and just it, the game never ended never seemed to make any progress or or lose any lives or anything like that and then eventually I just left it with me just flying forwards left it for about an hour and when I came back the game was still on so nothing even tracks you and tries to kill you it seems to be really difficult to actually locate enemies they'll just appear on the screen for a split second and then they're gone I managed to shoot a few of them there actually um, but yeah it, it's it's pretty nicely put together and you know the movement's pretty smooth for a, a game on an 8-bit computer with this kind of a sort of 3D game but it's just really boring and uh, I've already pretty much covered everything that there is to be covered I'm just going to quickly check the instructions to see if there's anything I missed there's remote targeting but I can't really be bothered with that ah computer controls is not C it's the Commodore key ah okay so there's a control computer so it, it just gives you some details there you go, there's my score at least I've got 400 points so far and I've killed two aircraft and no four aircraft which doesn't seem to make sense um, yeah so there's, there's a screen it gives me a bit of a respite from the noise uh, just looking what else I've got uh, I've covered all that kind of stuff like traveling and things like that space locks the speed of your vehicle to the tracked target and F1 and F3 increased oh, I've done the radar range yeah so pretty much the only thing I haven't done is locked onto a target so let's try that let's try and find a target and then lock my speed onto it oh yeah something is changing it seems Yeah, it's locked my speed onto a target, I just don't know where the target is. It's close to me though because I can hear it shooting me. No, so as I said, just like spinning around, there we go. Just spinning around in circles trying to find an enemy to kill. And it's gone off the screen again and I'm then tilting back the other way. Where the hell is it? Yeah, basically I'm bored now already. I've never been a big fan of flight sims anyway. Um, it just doesn't seem to be very easy to get to grips with. There's way too many controls, probably unnecessarily so, um, and it's rather boring. So, as you can probably guess, not worth $1.99 for me. And uh, as I've also mentioned, game over seems to be almost impossible. Um, so we'll just leave it there. If you only knew the power of the dark.
dark side. Two, one, zero.